Throughout the 2000s, Microsoft was developing the biggest version of Windows to succeed XP, Windows Vista. After numerous delays, feature creep, and resets, it did not turn out what people had hoped it would be. But was it really that bad? Hello everyone, this is TracerPixel128, and today we are going to answer that question. Was Windows Vista that bad? We are going to go over its development history, its release, its legacy, my personal thoughts on it, and more in this video. In May 2001, during the development of Windows XP, Microsoft announced two new versions of Windows, Longhorn and Blackcomb. Longhorn was a pretty ambitious project at the time, and it was meant to be the successor to Windows XP. It would have included new features such as WinFS, a new file system designed to supersede NTFS, but it ultimately never came to fruition. Pre-reset builds of Longhorn from 2002 to 2004 included a theme known as Plex, which was a modified version of the Luna UI from XP. Longhorn was supposed to be released in 2003, two years after Windows XP's release. Its release kept getting pushed back, and the developers realizing that Longhorn became too ambitious. Microsoft decided to reset its development in August 2004 and rework the OS from scratch. Using Windows Server 2003 as a base, the development of Longhorn was back on track in time for a release in 2005 or 2006. In July 2005, Microsoft announced a final name for Longhorn, Windows Vista. The name was chosen as an operating system to bring clarity to your world. Vista would be released in manufacturing on November 8, 2006, and had a general release two months later on January 30, 2007. It had a marketing campaign using the slogan, The WOW Starts Now, and had advertisements showing off the features of the new operating system. At launch, the reception was mixed. If you bought a computer when Vista launched in 2007 that originally shipped with XP, it had a sticker that said, designed for Windows XP, Windows Vista capable. Most people, when they bought a new computer expecting to upgrade to Vista, it did not run properly due to most OEM hardware at the time not being optimized properly for most versions of Vista. The Windows Vista capable sticker meant it was only optimized for Vista Home Basic, not Home Premium, Business, or even Ultimate. It having more additions than XP, driver issues especially if you were using a GPU from NVIDIA, performance issues caused by unoptimized hardware, as well as the confusion surrounding the Windows Vista capable program were why most people either stuck with XP or went to Mac OS X or Linux. Eventually, OEMs and hardware manufacturers did optimize their systems to be compatible with Windows Vista by the time Microsoft released Service Pack 1 in March 2008, which helped to fix a lot of the performance issues people had at launch. By the time Microsoft released Service Pack 2 in May 2009, which brought huge improvements to the OS and added better wireless and Bluetooth support, among other features, People had enough with Vista and wanted to wait for the next release, Windows 7, which was set to launch in October of that year. During that time and even nowadays, Windows Vista garnered a reputation for being one of the worst versions of Windows ever made and one of Microsoft's biggest failures. However, it started to gain a cult following from those who remember it fondly from back then. Zymanite created the Windows Vista Extended Kernel for those who want to run newer versions of software designed for Windows 7 and up, and there is even an unofficial Service Pack 3 in the works. Many people, myself included, never really had any issues with Vista when it was out, and even those who had a bad experience are starting to look at it under a new light. Here is my personal story about it. The first time I heard about Windows Vista was back in late 2006 when my dad ordered a shirt from the Microsoft merch store. Then we got our first computer that ran Vista, a Dell XPS laptop of some kind in 2008 that was my dad's, and my mom got a similar one in 2009 when her Dell Inspiron E1505 died. From what I remember, 
I never had any issues with it. I would play around in Windows Movie Maker making videos, browse the LEGO message boards and the Creation Lab, and I even beta tested LEGO Universe on it. I honestly had fun with it in the very short time it was running on my mom's laptop until she upgraded to Windows 7 in August 2010. The reason why we didn't keep it for very long was due to the reception it got and we just stuck with XP. Once I approached my teens and became a snobby and jaded computer geek, I misremembered about Vista and called it garbage because of what other people were saying about it. I rediscovered it years later and became curious. I created a virtual machine on VMware and installed Vista Ultimate Service Pack 2. And it was actually good, and not like what I thought it was since it had been 12 years since I last used it. This inspired me to seek out a computer on eBay from that time period, and I picked up the HP Pro 3000, which is what I'm going to use in this video to install Windows Vista and to answer the question, was it that bad? Today we are going to be installing Windows Vista Service Pack 2 64-bit on this DVD and I'm going to put it into this HP Pro 3000. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. Okay, position the tripod. Ugh. I hate this tripod. Wait. Oh. Yeah, I forgot I took the. I plugged the cables from the hard drive. Plugged it into the system now that's in this computer that I pulled out of my old computer. I just put the disc in off camera. Oops. Position that and then save changes and fix it. I'm going to boot into the DVD by going into the boot menu. <clears throat> Selecting the DVD RAM drive. I don't know why it's listed as DVD RAM. Should be DVD ROM. Yeah, DVD RAM is something else, but. Yeah. So this will take a while. To load. So here we are in the installer. What to install now? Now I'll put in the key. Here we are, we're in the license terms. I've read everything. Custom. Yeah, my main problem was with this drive, the SSD that I put in here, I unplugged the one terabyte that I put in here originally, and I put in my SSD mount with a 240 gig SSD, and I ran into an issue with it because it was of the GPT partition table. I was trying to use Ubuntu with G with G-Disk and G-Parted, and it just kept kept trying to format it to GPT, which is by default. So I just plugged, I unplugged the DVD-ROM drive and I plugged it, plugged it into the hard drive, booted it into Windows 7, and used disk part. And it, sure enough, it works and I don't see that error like I was getting last night, which I'll put in a clip to see. which kind of stalled my installation, but now, here we go. We are now copying files to the drive. You know, as I mentioned in the earlier clip, I never really had any problems with Vista when it was out. I only really used it for a short time, but thanks to me rediscovering it, I actually quite like it. It's not that bad, and it's actually one of my favorite 
modern versions of Windows and it kicked off the modern version. It really did kick off the modern versions of Windows. The modern NT era is what I like to call it. Yeah. Where a lot of the features that were introduced in Vista are, can be still found today in Windows 10 and 11. Which, that is nice. Just checking up on it, and it's already at 33%. 57%. This thing is moving a lot quicker than expected. Well, of course, because this is an SSD instead of a hard drive, so, yeah. Should definitely give it a boost in performance. I'm not intending on replacing the original hard drive with an SSD. It's mainly just for this video, but maybe one day I could redo the configuration. Now it's completing the installation, and I'm going to reboot now. You know, I have a fondness for these HP business machines because I had a couple of HP compacts that were from 2004, 2005 that had a Pentium 4 and ran Windows XP. And those were the desktops that I used back in the late 2000s and into the early 2010s. Started life as a computer that ran Windows XP and then it ran and then it ran Ubuntu towards the end of its life when we finally retired it in 2012. It was a couple of computers my dad got from a company he doesn't work for anymore. <clears throat> they were getting rid of some old equipment and that's what they had and what we ended up with. We ended up with a lot of computers. I also remember we got two Dell Optiplexes. I had a, a GX280 that was my last Windows XP machine. And then we had a couple of printers that were a couple, you know, a couple old laser jets and some other stuff. And some monitors too. That was actually pretty cool. I'm guessing, oh, we're back to the installation. Hold on. Yeah, when the computer rebooted, it didn't boot off of the SSD by default. Instead it tried to boot into the DVD to boot back into the DVD and try to restart the installation process. But I fixed that by going into the boot menu and selecting the SSD. I may need to reorder the drives in the BIOS, but I'll do that another time. Yeah, but for now it is completing the installation of Windows Vista. Now I'm going to pick a username and password. You can choose like a avatar for your account. I'll go with a kitty. I love cats. Those type of names. And type in a password. And now I'm going to pick a name for this PC. Well, I'm going to pick a name that fits this computer the most. I always like the default Vista background. I always thought that was pretty cool. I love how it looks. Like a like an Aurora Borealis thing going on. Yeah, I had to pick Musumi Matube, who is actually the name of the OS Ton for Windows Vista. Yeah, that's the name of this computer. And I'll ask later. Set the time. That can't be right. Seven. Thank you. And now let's start. Please wait while Windows checks your performance. Getting it done just got more fun. Time is precious, more than ever. Connect and communicate like never before. Turn everyday moments into lifetime memories. Connect, play, have fun. 
<laughs> okay, what is up with that voice? <laughs> uh, just being goofy and playing around. The power to find everything. Everything. Yes. I don't know why I'm sounding dramatic. <laughs> A more secure environment. I know there was one of the things that they talked about when Vista came out was its security and performance and reliability. It's basically just checking. I do know for newer versions of Windows they have something very similar to this. I know on Windows 10. I always like that screen. I don't want to sign in. Definitely need to get a video card driver because this is definitely not 1920 by 1080. I think it defaults to 640 by 480. And now it's preparing my desktop. Wait. What? Home premium? I thought I installed Ultimate. Huh. That's weird. Yeah, it comes up with the sidebar and everything. Yeah, I definitely need to find a graphics card driver since this has a AMD Radeon HD 7770. It's a lot of 7s. I'm going to turn off the sidebar. Oh, that's security thing. This is the welcome center. That shows up every time you open up Windows Vista. You can see a few of the specs. This has an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 at clocked at 2.9 gigahertz, 2.93 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, which is typical for the time. Yeah, I definitely need a source of driver for this graphics card because what's the resolution set at? Display settings. Yeah, no, 800 by 600, but yeah, I don't have the correct graphics drivers, which is why Arrow is not there, so I'll be back in just a moment. What I have right here is the latest release of the Catalyst Control Center for Windows Vista, released in 2013 for this card. I remember when I was installing this on Windows 7, I had to source a driver from elsewhere because the latest release that's on AMD's website wouldn't even work out of the box on Windows 7 Service Pack 1 without any updates. So hopefully this works since I haven't updated the system yet, but that will come at a later time. Or uh, maybe not. This was just for a video anyway to show Was Vista that bad? I'll just install it. I'll do an express installation. Yeah. Interesting how the folder still says ATI Technologies. That's crazy. Installing graphics drivers. Yeah, I remember when it was called the Catalyst Control Center, but now it's something else. I think it's just called AMD software now. Because on my current computer, which is next to this one, it's running Windows 10. I actually plan on it's, um, upgrading to Windows 11 in the near future. This thing is running. Yeah. Which has a newer AMD video card, but it's the same software, but just a newer version, of course. I think they got rid of the Catalyst branding in like 2015. I'm going off topic, but <laughs> I just need something to pad out the video length. And now it's completed. I'm going to yeah, reboot. Which will take a while. There it goes. Walking off and shutting down. I added this into the video that goes well. I just wanted to, well, not only because I wanted it to be longer, but also because I wanted to get arrow on this thing for the true Vista experience. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the boot menu because by default it just wants to do the PXE boot, 
for some reason and wants to do like a network boot. I need to find a way to disable that in the buy. Also, it was for the onboard network. I have a network card in this by Netgear. Okay, that was weird. It just kind of cut off like that. That's strange. And the reason why this has a different monitor, well, yeah, last night I was trying to do this video and I somehow, I just was swapping monitor because I, swapping monitor because I was originally wanted to use my, my capture card to capture from the PC and capture from the camera, kind of like what Michael and JD does, but unfortunately I just couldn't get that to work, so yeah. Forgot to change the monitor back because I usually have an Acer monitor here, but I'm using my old Asus monitor since I upgraded to an LG monitor that I'll talk about later. But now yeah, let's log on. And there we go. May need to uh, hold on. Personalized display settings and go to 1920 by 1080. Yes. And I need to fix the scaling, <laughs> which I'll probably do in the Catalyst Control Center, which I remember there was an option to do that. It's no matter what model you use, it's just very weird like this. It's like a black border around everything. So, my digital panels, okay, so I need to do scaling. Okay. Uh, uh. Scaling options, so just like that. There we go. Close that out, go to personalize. No wait, window color and appearance. And there we go. Now we have Arrow. I always like the look of Arrow on Vista and 7, transparency and everything. And I'll just, just take it off. Yeah, this is the. So now there is a. You know, everything about it. Windows Experience Index Intel Core 2 Duo, the same specs. But let's go to the Device Manager and see everything about it. Yeah, it just shows the yeah the driver for the onboard Ethernet has not been installed. Generic monitor, keyboard, mouse. HP DVD RAM GH40L ATA device. Let's see. The light scribe capable DVD drive that's in this machine. Display adapters, AMD Radeon HD 7700. And that's the model number for the SSD that's in the system. It's a 240 gig crucial branded drive. Yeah, the reason why this shows two processors is because this is a dual core system. And now I want to run task, not task scheduler, but task manager uh, classic view start the task manager so remember there was a way to test the performance and there it is you can see the CPU usage and everything as well as the amount of RAM that it's using in the uptime. There we go. It's basically just your standard installation of Vista, no matter if you're using Home Premium or Business or Ultimate games. It comes with pretty much like all the games like Chess, Titans, Free Cell, Hearts, Ink Ball, Mahjong Titans. Minesweeper, Verbal Place, Solitaire, and Spider Solitaire. No space cadet pinball. Anytime upgrade marketplace, which I think is the predecessor to 
the Microsoft Store. I forgot to mention in my Vista history part of this video that the market, Windows Marketplace was one of the first instances where you can, where you can buy copies of Windows digitally from Microsoft officially, which is, you can still do it nowadays of course. This was like one of the first versions of Windows to do that, instead of just going to a store. Internet Explorer, probably IE7, Calendar, Contacts, Defender, DVD Maker, which is also on Windows 7, Media Center. Now this is nostalgic. Eh, whatever. TV, movies, music and videos, tasks, online media. This is actually kind of cool. I remember this from back then. Search. Yeah, if, I, if, there, if there's any music on the hard drive that isn't sample. But yeah. Windows Media Center definitely brings back a lot of memories. I remember using it on Windows Media, Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005, as well as Windows 7, and like the same. So this is the version of Paint that it comes with. Like, yeah, it's just, just playing around. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. It even comes with Windows Movie Maker. This is like a more it's an updated version of the one that comes with Windows XP. This is version... well... Oh, yeah, 6.0. Where you can make your own movies. It's pretty similar to the one that's on Windows... no. Different... It's kind of the same as the one on Windows XP, but a little different. Maintenance, just all that. And then... Well, let's go to run and let's run DX Diag. Oh, DX Diag. Yeah, I'll check to see if it's digitally signed, and it should be. It's another way to get more information on your computer. It shows the exact. Oh, let me zoom in. The exact model of this PC, which is an HP Pro 3000 Micro Tower PC, not Mid Tower. Display hardware. This is not the original graphics card it came with. Sound and any input devices that are attached to the system. So yeah. Vista so far it actually runs pretty well. Especially on a system like this. I don't have any. Uh, let's uh, let's play a quick game of Minesweeper. Why not? And turn it down because it's a little loud. Huh. Uh, nope. Wait. Why is this set to the... Eh, whatever. Okay, how to play. That's the best I could do. <laughs> uh, let's see about sound and try to change it to the onboard speakers because it's set to the speakers that are in the monitor as opposed to the computer itself because this monitor has built-in speakers and they do work. They sound pretty well. Yeah. So I remember I can't do Dream Scene because this isn't Ultimate, but I have Ultimate on the hard drive that's on this machine. So yeah, this is basically a quick overview of Vista, and and it, so far it runs very well. I hope you enjoyed this video of me talking about Windows Vista, and what are your personal thoughts about it, and, and, and your store, and your history about it? Did you, did, what did you think of it? Leave your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.